My husband, Mark, and I have been living together for nearly eight years. He and I are quite happy in our marriage, but when it comes to my husband's parents, there's always a bit of conflict. Unfortunately, my mother-in-law has always harbored negative feelings towards me right from the moment we got engaged. Father-in-law was sweet, but he would always let mother-in-law walk all over him and mostly kept to himself. My husband comes from a more affluent background than I do, and my mother-in-law has always viewed this as a reason to dislike me. From the beginning, she would act like me belonging to a middle-class family was somehow wrong. She would make comments about my looks, my outfits, or my shoes. I admit I was not self-conscious before, but I would always dress up appropriately regardless of who I was meeting. However, it was never enough, and due to her incessant comments, I started to buy expensive clothes specifically to wear on occasions when I had to meet her, so she would not look at me in pity. On one occasion, I wore a white shirt that she had seen me wear a month ago, and mother-in-law immediately made a comment about how I was repeating my clothes and that well-off people don't do this. She sneered at how embarrassing it was. My husband did try to stop her, but mother-in-law would knowingly make these comments in front of everyone, so I would be red-faced in embarrassment. She would even force me to go shopping with her, and she would buy me the type of clothes that I didn't even like wearing. However, I would gratefully accept her gestures and would thank her sincerely. I always made an effort to nurture a positive relationship with them because I genuinely believed she would eventually warm up to me. But then things started to escalate and the strings attached aspect of their generosity became apparent. While we were still less than a year into dating, I got a job in a really good company that allowed me to upgrade my lifestyle significantly. Mark was really happy for him, but when mother-in-law found out, she was not happy. She started to call me and text me, demanding that I let her know exactly how much I was earning since, according to her, females in their families should always earn less than their men. I was really offended and pointed out to her that I was bound to earn more than my husband in the long run since I work in the pharmaceutical field, which is really lucrative. Mother-in-law started to then tell me how I was allowed to do this job if I wanted, but when I would get married to Mark, I had to leave it so that other family members don't talk about how Mark is not able to provide. This really made me laugh, as, as it wasn't the 1950s anymore. And Mark never had a problem with my job or my income. I decided to talk to Mark directly about this and let him know how his mother was making me feel uncomfortable. He was furious that she had been contacting me and texting me about all this. I don't know what he talked to mother-in-law about, but she called me screaming and crying about how I'm trying to drive a wedge between her and her son and how I am the devil incarnate. She said she would never allow Mark to marry a woman like me and that I needed to up and leave him. I cut the call and blocked her because I was starting to get really tired of her toxic behavior. That was the first major red flag. Of course, Mark and I never broke up, but it did make me wonder about the type of mother he grew up with. Through the years, I could not completely cut off mother-in-law since there were several family occasions where Mark was invited and I would have to go as well, where she would be there. Mother-in-law would completely ignore me and act like I didn't exist. Like, for example, if we walked into Mark's cousin's birthday party, everyone would greet us. Mother-in-law would come rushing to hug Mark and ask him about his day. If Mark tried to bring me into the conversation, she would look around disinterested and would quickly change the subject. The one pattern I began to notice 
was that she would always bring up her health issues and tell Mark about how she was getting old and frail and how one day she could just drop dead so he needed to take care of her more, even though she had absolutely no health issues whatsoever and was perfectly fine. It was weird the way she would try to manipulate her own son to get some emotional appeal and attention from him. When Mark proposed to me after years of dating, he had invited everyone to our engagement party. My parents and grandparents were really happy for us, but I can't say the same for my husband's parents. Mother-in-law came to our party with a scowling face and her face went down even more when she saw the ring on my hand. She started to tell Mark how disrespectful it was for him to buy me a bigger ring than the one she got from father-in-law. Father-in-law tried to stop her, urging her to not make a scene, but mother-in-law kept saying how her son could not do anything good for her, yet he is doing everything for this poor girl. This pissed me off, so I told her that if she could not respect me, then she needed to leave. Mother-in-law was shocked to hear this, but I knew I could not let her ruin the happiest day of my life and that too in front of my entire family. Father-in-law escorted her out while she kept yelling for Mark who had my back. Later, mother-in-law called to apologize to Mark, saying how she was drunk even though we all knew she hardly drank a glass of wine. But because mother-in-law was apologizing to both of us, we decided to let it slide. Then came the planning of the wedding. Mother-in-law insisted that she would be included during my dress shopping, saying how she has always wanted to do this. It's important to note that during this time, my patience with her was already running thin. But she was the mother to my fiancé, and I could not blatantly be disrespectful to her, so I allowed her to come. I did warn my mother and cousin about it so they were ready if she pulled any stunt. Just like clockwork, as expected, mother-in-law had a problem with my dress. She told me how sophisticated people didn't wear so many laces and demanded that I should wear a more traditional white dress. I refused and my mother told her that I was not her daughter so she should keep her mouth shut. Mother-in-law got pissed and started to pout in a corner with her arms crossed like a toddler. Throughout the time I tried on clothes, she would be nothing but nasty towards my dress choices. In the end, I did decide on a dress and we paid for it. Mother-in-law then came up to me and told me how she was glad that I picked up the dress because it made my arms look fat and giggled. Hearing this comment, my mother, who had been incredibly patient, started to yell at her and admonish her for her immature behavior. I was on the verge of tears because no one wants to hear something like that about their dream dress, and I'm not even fat, so I could not understand why she would say something like that. We let her know that she was going to have to find her own way back home since I had picked up everyone that day and I refused to let her come back with us since I knew she would continue to say things about me in the car. Mother-in-law started to freak out how I could not just leave her, but that's exactly what I did. While I was on the way to drop off my mother, I got a call from Mark, who started to ask how I could ever do this to my mother and how she had called him crying, accusing me of leaving her knowingly. I told Mark that I would explain everything once I went back home, but he continued to berate me so my mother, who could hear everything since he was on speaker, let him know that he had no idea what his mother had done to us the whole day. She continued to list one by one about how mother-in-law had behaved and in the end asked Mark if he thought this is how well-respected adults behave. Clearly, Mark was embarrassed, since he had no idea about the whole story. Obviously, mother-in-law had not told him the full picture. Anyways, later, when he came back home, he apologized to me again. He told me how he just freaked out, thinking his old mother was left all alone, so he reacted that way. I told him that I would 
have never done something like that had she not been nasty to me the entire day. Mark hugged me and let me know that he would understand if he wanted me to uninvite her from our wedding. At this point, I would have wanted nothing more than uninviting her, but I was worried that father-in-law might not be able to come since his wife would not let him attend if she wasn't attending. I could not let my husband's wedding pass by and his parents would not be present. I mean, that would just be outright cruel. We decided to talk to father-in-law before our wedding and informed him that if mother-in-law's behavior started to get out of hand, he would have to remove her. He understood and assured us that he knew exactly what we were going through. I felt bad for the poor guy for having to handle her 24-7. During the wedding, mother-in-law was surprisingly well behaved. She would keep bragging to everyone about how grand our celebration was, as if she had paid for everything. It was all me and my husband's wedding fund. Yet his family assumed that since he was from an affluent family and mother-in-law always showed off about it, maybe she and father-in-law had paid for our wedding. However, during the wedding toast, father-in-law made it clear that they had not paid a single dime and this was all a result of our hard work. He also talked about how proud he was to have an accomplished daughter-in-law and never imagined that his son could finally lock down someone as intelligent as me. Later, guests also congratulated us since they were surprised that we could do this all on our own. Mother-in-law's face soured and she was pissed at father-in-law clearly. During the father-daughter dance, my dad and I danced for a while. Everyone clapped. Mark was about to come and take over when mother-in-law came running and said how she needed to be the first woman to dance with her baby boy before any other woman. Mark obliged and they danced later during the wedding. Mother-in-law came up to me and congratulated me. I politely smiled when she told me out of nowhere, I was wrong. I don't think your arms look that fat in this dress. Then she walked away as if it was nothing. It really pissed me off, but I didn't want her mean comments to ruin my beautiful day. Everyone had a good time and we danced through the night and maybe drank too much. The next day when I woke up, I had several messages from mother-in-law. Imagine my shock when I read through the messages and she had written how I had embarrassed her throughout the night and how I needed to do better if I was going to be a part of her family. I was a bit hungover, but I reimbursed everything throughout the night. And just in case, I called my parents to ask them if I had said or done anything embarrassing. And they said, no, I didn't. And that everyone was having a good time. Later, when my husband woke up, I showed him all the messages and he told me to ignore them. I got a bit suspicious, so I asked him to tell me what mother-in-law meant. This is when Mark revealed that throughout the night, mother-in-law would come up to him and tell him how I was having too much fun, if I was even dancing with my cousins. She would tell Mark how I was a wild horse and he needed to control me since we were now married. Mark said all this jokingly and told me how I ignored her comments then and I should ignore her comments now. However, I was offended that she could imply something like that when I was dancing with my own family members in celebration of my wedding. She had no right to talk about me that way. I wanted to confront her right then and there, but Mark and I were going for our honeymoon, so I put that on the back burner. Our honeymoon was great and we had such a good time. The day we came back from our honeymoon, mother-in-law called me and started to sweetly ask me how the honeymoon went. This was very weird since she hardly calls me. I told her how I didn't appreciate what she said about me to Mark on the night of our wedding and she quickly brushed it off saying she didn't mean any harm. Then she continued to pry details into our honeymoon and kept asking if we had a lot of alone time. I asked her to be straight up with me since I didn't think our honeymoon was any of her business. But mother-in-law started to say how she simply wanted to know if she was going to be a grandmother soon. I almost gagged when I heard that for two reasons. 
The first reason is I had just got married and it was not even a week. She expected me to become a breeding mule for her dream of becoming a grandmother. Secondly, both Mark and I never want kids. We had discussed this long before we got serious with each other and our opinions had never changed. We did not want to raise kids, although we had nothing against children. Now, this is something we had never really outright told our parents because at the end of the day, it's our personal business. I kept my mouth shut as mother-in-law kept saying how I needed to get pregnant as fast as I could as my biological clock was ticking and this was my best baby-making years. I was cringing so hard hearing her talk this way when she took it one step even further. She started to say how me and my husband should stop using condoms, which was an extremely inappropriate thing for her to say. I shut her down immediately and told her that I was done with this conversation. When I told Mark about this, he was furious. He immediately called her to give her a piece of his mind and truthfully confessed to her that we didn't want children. Mother-in-law reacted exactly like we knew she would. She screamed and raged over the phone and acted like we had killed her dog or something. She started to threaten that if he didn't give her a grandchild, then she would not leave anything in her will, to which Mark laughed and let her know that she owned no assets since she and father-in-law had a prenup, so she could not give him anything anyways. Mother-in-law then screamed at me that this was all my fault and that as a woman, my only job was to give a child to my husband and I could not even do that. She started to throw words like faulty, which was really hurtful to hear. Mark asked her to stop, but she continued to throw insults at me and told us how we had destroyed her lifelong dream and that if we didn't want kids, then why the hell did we ever get married? Hearing this, Mark finally put his foot down. He told her that he was done and she needed to shut up. He let her know that she could not speak to me that way anymore and that since she had continued to disrespect me for all these years, he was done with her. Mother-in-law tried to backtrack, but he told her that he was going to cut her off from his life and that she was not welcome anymore to our place or in our lives. He warned her that if she ever showed up, we would directly call the police and embarrass her in front of our neighbors. We knew how much she cared about other people's opinions. Since then, we stayed true to our word and cut off all contact with her. Father-in-law did try to intervene once, but after talking to Mark and hearing the full story, he supported our decision. And over the years, my parents and father-in-law have met several times and we never invite mother-in-law over. Thankfully, she has respected our rules and boundaries. In December of last year, I got pregnant accidentally. We were shocked since this was something that we didn't want, but we are in good places in our life. So we thought we would just go along with it. Everyone found out the news and called us to congratulate us. Mother-in-law sent a bouquet of flowers and a letter of apology to us. She had written how she had fought long and hard over her behavior and had changed after years of therapy. I didn't bother replying anything to her since I was still unsure about her so-called changed behavior. However, in just two months of my pregnancy, I suffered a miscarriage. It happened in the middle of the night and I just froze when I saw all the blood. I woke up Mark crying, who immediately drove me to our nearest hospital. We were informed that we had lost the baby. It was heartbreaking because even though we didn't want to be pregnant, we still loved the little bugger and would have given our child everything that we could. I did not know how to process my grief as this was an awful situation to be in. Mark and my parents stayed with me throughout all of this. Father-in-law and Mark's family called to check up on us and even dropped by to be there for us. My mom would stay at our place for days because she knew I didn't want to get out of bed. Everything inside me just hurt and I would cry for hours on end. Mark was my rock and I slowly started to feel better bit by bit. Last week, 
father-in-law invited us for his and mother-in-law's 25th wedding anniversary. This was a big deal for the family and everyone had been invited. Mark and I didn't want to go since we knew the topic of miscarriage would come up and it would really affect us. We didn't want to have to explain to everyone again about the worst day of our lives. However, father-in-law begged us to come since he wanted to spend time with us and told us how we needed to take a night off for ourselves and just chill. We begrudgingly agreed and this was going to be the first time we would see mother-in-law after all these years. However, I was already going through such a hard time on my own that I didn't have the energy to, to even think about her or her antics. Mother-in-law was pleasantly surprised to see Mark and ran to hug him. She was ice cold to me in comparison, but I didn't care. So I found my seat to sit down, allowing Mark to talk to his mother. Later during dinner, everyone kept talking about their good news and how well they were doing in their lives like people usually do. One of Mark's cousins mentioned how she was pregnant and it was like a wrench to my heart. Everyone congratulated her when mother-in-law suddenly got up to give a toast, holding a mic. She raised her glass and started to say how she was so happy to be surrounded by her loved ones and how she would not have it any other way. Mother-in-law then congratulated Mark's cousin for her pregnancy and started to say how she was bringing a little bundle of joy into the world while others are killing children. She then looked at me pointedly and started to say how she knew I had done something to the baby because there was just no way that it was a simple miscarriage. Mark and I immediately froze because we could not believe how unbelievably cruel she was being. Mother-in-law continued to say loudly how her son had settled for someone like me and that she had allowed our marriage thinking at least I could give her grandchildren, but I was not even capable enough to do that. She announced how I was nothing more than a trophy wife and that she could not wait for Mark to finally divorce me, as I was anyway not her family, so no one had to see me for her next anniversary party. She then cheered and drank the entire glass as if she had just been given a victory speech. The entire room was silent as Mark asked his mother what the hell she was doing. They went into a screaming match where she continued to blame and he tried to protect me as much as he could by saying how ridiculous she was being. I was so ashamed and embarrassed by everything that I just burst into tears. This was all just too much for me and I was feeling a lot of emotions. Mother-in-law mocked how I should stop acting because no one was going to buy my sob story anyway. Out of nowhere, father-in-law, who had stayed silent in his seat watching the whole spectacle, got up and asked everyone to calm down. He said how he needed to say something important to get it off his chest. He took the mic and announced that he had suffered for the past 25 years and that tonight had finally opened his eyes to the fact that he was done with all this. He looked at mother-in-law, who looked at him confusingly as he announced that there would be no wedding anniversary next year, as he did not want to remain married to her anymore. She looked like she had been hit on her face with a brick wall. Father-in-law went on to announce that he had stayed married to a woman like her for all these years because he wanted my husband to have a good example and didn't want to break the family up. However, after watching mother-in-law's antics over the years and how she continues to hurt people, he has come to realize that he is too old now to go through with this. Mother-in-law looked stunned as father-in-law asked the guests to please eat as much as they wanted, but that he was going to go out and have a drink. He took off his suit and tie as he walked out of the wedding. Mother-in-law started to yell at him to come back, but he ignored her. She then directed her anger at me, saying how I ruined everything no matter what. But Mark told her that this was all her fault, and he was glad that his dad was finally leaving her. This must have really hurt mother-in-law because she got quiet and told everyone she was leaving also. 
Some of the guests did come up to me and check up on me since they were worried about me. Mark's cousin, who was pregnant, came and hugged me. Since the incident, father-in-law has been staying with us. He has refused to go back, even though mother-in-law keeps calling him hundreds of times. He's told us that he would be talking to a divorce lawyer. I feel really guilty because I somehow feel responsible for all of this. Am I at fault for father-in-law divorcing my husband's mother? Please give me honest opinions only. Update 1. I did not expect this post to blow up when I posted this. So many people have shared with me their own stories of toxic mother-in-laws, which is mind-boggling. I can't imagine why a parent would ever behave this way. Also, to clarify, please don't bash my husband. He has stood up to me whenever he could. It's not easy to have an overbearing, controlling, toxic parent. I was lucky enough to grow up with loving parents, but he was not. Clearly, he grew up thinking her behavior was normal and has done everything he could to protect me. Lastly, I would like to thank everyone who shared their own journeys with miscarriage. I'm truly, truly sorry for everyone who has gone through this. I hate to admit it, but I feel so much guilt because it was my job to protect the baby and I did everything I could, but I feel like I failed even though it was in no way my fault. You all are right. I need to go and talk to a therapist about it. I will also join various forums where other moms have gone through this tragedy so I can feel seen and understood. Update 2. Father-in-law has served divorce papers to mother-in-law finally. It's been two months since my last update and father-in-law has been staying with us. He is a great house guest. I can see where my husband gets his humor from. Father-in-law also loves to cook, so sometimes when I come back home from work, he already has food on the table. Mother-in-law was really lucky to have him, and I don't know why she let herself lose a gem like him. When father-in-law and Mark went to serve her divorce papers, she refused to look at them. Mark has told me that she yelled at them that they had no right to cut her off, and that she said all that about me because she wanted only good things for our family. Mark ignored her and helped father-in-law pack his things. Mother-in-law got pissed and started to throw things on the ground, yelling and screaming. At this, father-in-law threatened to call the police since it was technically his house. Hearing this, she shut up because she knew she had nowhere to go. After the party, no one had reached out to her except to say how big of an a-hole she was. Everyone knew she had lied about me being a trophy wife because I earned really well and they also understood my pain due to the miscarriage. Clearly, they had all laid it on to mother-in-law and let her know that they didn't want to be around an unstable person like her. She had no family or friends left due to her own antics. She has tried to beg father-in-law, but he clearly doesn't want anything to do with her. My parents have talked to mother-in-law after hearing what she did to me, and they would not hesitate to pursue legal action against her for harassing me and defaming me publicly. My mom is not the silent type and told her exactly what she thought. Knowing my parents, I know they won't hesitate to stick by their words and take her to court, so I hope for mother-in-law's sake she stays away from me. Update 3. Thank you to all the people who have stuck by me throughout this journey. It's been eight months since I updated and I wanted to let you know that father-in-law is a free man now. He and mother-in-law had a prenup, so she could not take anything that wasn't hers. He agreed to let her have the entirety of their joint account and also let her keep the car. She was furious and kept demanding that he should let her keep the house also, but he and his lawyer laughed at her face, since it belonged to father-in-law before he got married to her. Mark, has heard that she is currently staying at one of his cousin's places while she looks for an affordable place. 
I think she has more than enough money to live a good, comfortable life all on her own. Mother-in-law has stayed away from us for the most part, even though we hear from time to time that she tries to reach out to people with her side of the story to gain some sympathy. Well, she can do whatever she wants. As per us, we are happy. Mark and I are doing really well. I did the therapy I had mentioned and it has helped me make new friends who totally get me. Mark also signed up for individual therapy classes for himself so he can deal with his past issues. Our career is going well and we are just grateful for everything we have right now. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.